When engineers and scientists want to use a laser, the first thing they want to consider is the stability of the laser. In most circumstances, temperature is the source of all the instabilities of power, frequency, and wavelength. And there's, there's no way in reality you can achieve perfect stability. And when you talk about stability, you're talking about some set goal that you have, and the fluctuation away from it is your instability. So in reality, you cannot always maintain 100% of your goal. The key here is for us to come up with a way to control the stability to the point where the application will require and also keep it at, at a reasonable price. If you remember from your freshman physics that wavelengths and frequency are connected through the speed of light, you are correct. However, in CO2 lasers, we use these two terms uh, slightly differently. In this whiteboard, I'm illustrating molecular lines in the frequency domain, and these are two molecular lines. So if you have a laser operating between these two lines, we call it a line hop, or it, it is going through a wavelength instability. On the other hand, if your laser is moving slightly within one wavelength, we call it frequency instability. So this is a distinction in CO2 laser of wavelengths versus frequency. In order to achieve highest possible stability, we use invar structure, like in this laser. This laser is invar structure, the gold-plated invar structure. And uh, in this laser, you do not see the invar, but it's built in. Invar is a material that has a very low thermal expansion. So even when the temperature changes, it minimizes thermal expansion and contraction due to temperature fluctuation. On the second board, we illustrate the impact of variation of the laser body temperature, which influences the laser resonator length. And you can see the solid blue line indicates the laser resonator mode in one temperature. The dashed blue line indicates the resonator mode when the resonator is at a different temperature. So you can see when the laser temperature changes, the mode changes. It overlapping with the laser with a molecular line changes. In this case, the dashed line moves further down in this line and it moves further up in this line. Therefore, the overlapping point here is higher than the overlapping point here, and the laser changes the wavelengths from this one to this one, which we call a line hop. So the laser hops a line from here to here. This is a change in wavelengths. In our website, we describe the temperature controlling of the wavelength, and this is a precisely illustrating that when you have a different temperature, the cavity length is different. Therefore, you have two different groups of resonator mode. One group overlaps optimally with this line. The other group, dashed line, overlaps optimally with this line. Therefore, you can change from one line to the other. This is a controlled line hop, and using this, we can switch from one wavelength to another. When in applications where people need to have one line and one line only all the time, we add an intracavity grating to it. The effect of the intracavity grating is like dropping, if we want this line to operate without this line forever, even during thermal expansion, by adding a grating, it is equivalent to dropping the gain of this line down to almost zero. Therefore, when the temperature changes, the mode pattern changes, the laser is always kept in one line and one line only. The trade-off of the, of the grading is that for one thing,
grating is less efficient, therefore the laser will have less power. And uh, the other thing is the grating is a complex uh, structure, therefore the laser is more expensive. In certain applications where people want as high of a power stability as possible, as well as wavelengths and frequency stability, at Access Laser we develop a product that is called the Line Tracker. Here's an illustration of a line tracker where you have the laser and uh, on the laser body you have the resonator controlled by a piezo actuator that can move back and forth and you have a sampler to pick off a small fraction of the output beam and then the signal is sent by a detector back to the controller and the controller therefore regulates the movement of the piezo to maintain basically the longitudinal mode at fixed space in frequency domain. And here's the real illustration of a line tracker system. Here's the pickup. The laser comes out of this. A small portion is picked off and sent to the controller. And the controller commands the piezo to counter the natural drift of the laser resonator. Like any technology, it has its limitations. For example, in this particular laser, if the fan cool fails, the laser body temperature keeps rising. The piezo will reach its limit of compensation. It'll call it quits. At the same time, it'll give a signal to the operator to say um, it is out of control.